Oh boy, do I have an exciting video for you today because today I'm going to be recreating one of my favorite custom games from StarCraft II using Unity's Entity Component System. Now, of course, when we're looking at Unity's Entity Component System, it works very well when we're trying to simulate large numbers of entities. We can look at games like Diplomacy is Not an Option, which is a real-time strategy game, or even City Builders like this game called Ixion. Both these games were made using Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system to process these large numbers of entities. So I thought it would be a fun idea for me to kind of dip my toes into the RTS development just a little bit and create one of my favorite custom games from StarCraft II. Now, to give you a little bit of a backstory, I was never really that good at the main game of StarCraft II, but when my friends and I would play, we'd often play these custom games. There was this one custom game in particular that we played quite often called Nexus Wars. So basically the way that Nexus Wars works is it's a four versus four team battle where each team is set up on one side of the map. Now each team basically has a base that they're trying to protect, which is called the Nexus. Now each player basically has their own unit that they can control, and this unit has the ability to build different structures. Now once a structure is built, it's going to spawn units of a specific type based off of a timer. Now you as the player don't need to control these units at all. Once the units spawn, they're just gonna go ahead and pathfind their way to the opponent's Nexus and try to destroy it. However, because this is a real-time head-to-head game, units from the opposing team are going to be making their way towards your base and you're gonna to have to fight them in the middle so it becomes this really cool kind of like tug of war battle almost where you're basically you know trying to come up with a strategy of what types of units to spawn that might counter some of their units and then of course they're trying to counter your counter and then the game basically goes back and forth until eventually one person just gets overwhelmed and their base gets destroyed. So in today's video, I'm going to be recreating Nexus Wars as Turbo Wars built with Unity's Entity Component System, but with just a little extra twist because I'm not going to be making this game entirely on my own. I'm gonna have a little bit of help from the Unity Asset Store. So in today's video, I'm gonna be using 12 assets off the Unity Asset Store to make this game look and play awesome. I should also mention that today's video is sponsored by the Unity Asset Store, who provided me with some of the assets in this video that I did not already own. So thank you very much to Unity for sponsoring today's video. Now the Unity Asset Store is hosting their summer sale right now. And this is a really exciting sale because many creators like myself got to hand select the assets that are going to be a part of this sale. Now the assets that I've picked are going to be on sale from August 9th through August 17th. Again, many of them are going to be featured in today's video. So go ahead and check the links in the description if you want to go ahead and check out any of these assets that I'm gonna be talking about today. So anyway, let's just go ahead and fire up a new project and figure out what Turbo Wars is going to look like. So I'm actually gonna start off this project by using an asset that I use pretty much at the start of every single project that I start, and this is the Gridbox Prototype Materials. Now this is a completely free asset on the Unity Asset Store. It works extremely well with Pro Builder. You basically get these nice grid boxes, which is really great for blocking out levels and figuring out the relative sizing of kind of the main things in there. So I kind of use this to start figuring out how my overall level is going to look before I start adding in some actual assets. So then I started to kind of figure out the general art style of my game and I chose to use this awesome pack from Cinti Studios called Polygon Sci-Fi Worlds. Now, Cinti Studios is one of my favorite asset store developers because they create these awesome low poly models that, you know, even though they are low poly, they look fantastic in game and they have tons of little details and just fun little things about them. Um, so anyways, this Sci-Fi Worlds pack is just a really great pack for an RTS style game because it provides you with a ton of assets for characters, buildings, vehicles, environments, and so much more. So I thought this would be a perfect game to kind of base my whole visual style around. So at the beginning, I don't really need all too much. I'm basically just going to create some platforms for the main bases and then have kind of your main sort of nexus as this sort of um, reactor building here. So once I kind of have the general things blocked out, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in some gameplay. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add in kind of the base building mechanic where we can basically spawn different buildings into the world and then those buildings are going to actually spawn units based on a timer. So first thing that I'm gonna do is essentially create a grid system for the player to choose choose to where to build their different units on. So this whole grid system is actually built out using Unity Mono Behaviors just because it's really easy to do with Unity Mono Behaviors and there's nothing necessarily like performance critical happening at this point and there's no reason for this, 
things to actually be entities because we can basically just you know spawn game objects and keep track of the kind of spawn position and be able to spawn ECS entities from that spawn position whenever we want to. Now for the grid system, I started off by just drawing some debug lines using the built-in Unity APIs for these different grids, but I quickly switched those out for the shapes vector graphics from the excellent asset shapes. This is another excellent asset because it allows you to easily draw vector shapes in real time in your game environment. And of course, these look much more professional. We can have nice rounded corners and be able to play with the colors a little bit more. So I think it looks really excellent in this game. And as you'll see later on in this video, it's extremely useful for doing other things, just like drawing debug lines. And again, it's much more easier to use and feature filled than Unity's built-in debug line drawing. So I would highly recommend this asset for any project that you're creating. So at this point, I have kind of a little bit of a building system in place where we can basically drop buildings on and they're just kind of spawning units. However, as you can see, these units are basically just kind of flying across to the other base right now. So let's actually go ahead and implement some pathfinding here. So I'm going to be using the agents navigation package again. And I am such a huge fan of this package. I did a full deep dive video on this a couple of weeks ago, and I think it is a really excellent asset. It's just really easy to use. I was able to get this set up in just a couple of minutes for this project, and it basically just allows these entities to pathfind their way to the opposing base very, very easily. And here's a little peek about kind of how I did this. I actually have a separate kind of layer of everything for the actual pathfinding plane. So then that way, you know, I can kind of swap out the visuals for better looking things later, and I can kind of still keep my base pathfinding planes. You'll see that I actually do have two separate lanes. I kind of have a top lane and a bottom lane so they, we can kind of have these like two different um, you know, top and bottom lanes doing their different battles of tug of war, kind of similar to how the Nexus Wars works. So anyways, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Of course, we have all these units running around in T-pose right now, and that's not exactly what we want out of our final polished looking game. So yes, I am actually going to go ahead and implement some ECS based animations in our project using the excellent asset, the GPU ECS Animation Baker. So basically the way that this works is you have to go through a little bit of a setup process to kind of line up all your animations and everything like that. And then you actually just hit a button and it actually bakes all the animations into a texture. So I'm gonna actually show you, this is what the texture looks like right now for the actual baked animations. And this texture is basically sampled by the GPU to basically modify all the different vertices to play different animations. So actually in this texture, right here there's three different animations that can be played but anyways now that we have that up and running i now have these units basically just naruto running from one side to the other and it looks hilarious and i was having just a ton of fun playing around with this we can now have mobs and mobs of entities doing all kinds of crazy animations so that was uh, definitely a fun thing to play with so the next thing to do is actually add in some battling so we have enemies on both sides of the screen now we want them to when they intersect start battling with each other so for this project i've just decided to use unity's built-in dots physics system, but I do want to give a shout out to another asset from the Unity Asset Store, which is the Gimme Dots Geometry Asset. This is a really cool asset because it gives you some octree and KD tree type things for very fast and efficient searching. It seems to actually be set up more for working well with game objects rather than ECS based entities. I was playing around with it a little bit on the ECS side and didn't, unfortunately didn't get it to quite work the way that I wanted to. So I ended up just using the regular Dots Physics system because I already knew how to use that already ready but I was very impressed with what they were showcasing for all the game object based sample projects that they provided. So I would highly recommend looking into that if you're using a game object based game or you want to do any of their features that the Gimme Dots Geometry offers because there are quite a bit of other things that it offers. So basically for my implementation, I used the overlap AABB, which is the axis aligned bounding box to just do a quick search for enemies within a specific radius to see if there are any you know, enemies within there. If there are, then they're actually going to start kind of pathfinding to each other. And you can see as I was going through the debug process, I was again using the shapes asset to just draw lines between the different enemies. So I knew which ones were kind of properly detecting each other and make sure that we're not detecting units on the same team or anything like that. So again, another shout out to the shapes asset, very helpful to use for things like this. So now as I'm going through the process of actually implementing these battle mechanics, I found it a little bit annoying to have to kind of, you know, scroll my camera all the way from one side to the other side to just, you know, spawn units to just kind of have them attack and make sure that they're, you know, able to interact with each other in the way that I want them to. So I ended up using another asset, which is the adaptive split screen asset. This is a really interesting asset because it's really actually kind of geared more towards local couch co-op type play, where if you have kind of a split screen type game, you can kind of have players and they 
if they kind of go to different places in the map, the screen just splits out and it always gives the player a nice good view about, you know, what they're able to see in relation to the level and everything like that. And then if the players kind of come together, the kind of camera windows kind of converge into one. So it is a really interesting asset for kind of things like that. However, I was actually able to adapt it to this type of game where I can basically just kind of split the screen down the middle and I was able to look at one base on one side and one base on the other side. Then I kind of set up my own little camera controller, was able to basically independently move these cameras around. And again, it's really cool that you can see how as I'm moving things around, you can see that the, sc the split screen is kind of changing. And so it was really fun to play with. I will say that there are just a couple limitations that I know the developer has plans to address at some point. Um, for instance, one of them is that the cameras can only be rotated about the X axis. So you can basically kind of only tilt the camera down. You actually can't tilt the camera side to side or do any camera roll or anything like that. I guess it's just not supported right now. So um, because of that, I actually had to basically rotate my entire scene at 90 degrees. So now that um, you know, I didn't have to have any rotations on my camera's Y axis. So once I got that all sorted out, everything worked pretty well, but there were just a kind of a couple little quirks with this asset. So now as I'm building out the battle system, I of course want it to be a little bit more interesting. So I kind of continued to use the GPU ECS animation baker to add in more animations. So now that not only can these entities run, they can actually have little attack animations and things like that. So I was able to add in this attack animation and kind of sync it up with uh, the timing of it shooting out a projectile. And then after that, I kind of want to add a little bit of an effect. So when the projectile actually hits an enemy, that a little explosion effect plays. So I was able to use the next asset pack, which is the Epic Tune FX pack, which is another, again, longtime favorite of mine um, because it's just a really easy way that we can add in these cool tune effects that I think go really well with this low poly type style. So the way that I actually have this set up is I'm using a managed data component, which is kind of similar to a regular ECS data component except it uses a class rather than a struct and then I have this attached to the projectile game object now basically when the projectile game object detects its collision it's just going to go ahead and spawn whatever game object is stored in that managed data component so in this case, I just have regular prefab references to the Epic Tune Effects game objects so that I can just go ahead and spawn those into the world whenever I want to. Then after that, I have to add in just a silly little death animation. This animation is actually called a kick to the groin and I thought it actually worked kind of well for a death animation. So I just did that and then just kind of have the uh, basically entities sink down below the map and then just kind of despawn after that. So now we kind of have the player versus player battle interactions happening exactly how we want it. Now we need to step it up a notch and we're going to actually go ahead and destroy the enemy's base. Now because this is kind of the main point of the game where we're trying to destroy the enemy's base, I think I want this to be really awesome and epic. So I think it would be really cool to maybe have the base break up into a bunch of pieces and kind of explode out and we can have a bunch of explosion effects coming out of that. So I'm actually going to be using a couple of assets to accomplish this. So first I'm going to uh, be using the dots mesh slicer and the dots plus asset. So the whole idea behind the dots dots mesh slicer is that we can use it to basically just slice up this one mesh that I got again from the Sinti sci-fi worlds pack and break it up into little chunks that can kind of you know explode out into all different directions now in order to use that we do also need to use the dots plus asset so that's why I'm kind of including both of these here together um, in order to actually slice up that geometry kind of how we want it to. The Dots Plus asset is just a really great asset to have for any Dots developers anyways, because it provides a lot of handy math functions as well as just other utilities that are really helpful to use. So anyways, just using those two assets, I kind of just you know split the base up into a bunch of different pieces and added an explosion force at the bottom to kind of make them all explode out after that. However, it still maybe just needed a little bit more. So I just went you know, totally overboard with some epic tune effects. Now we have this, you know, awesome animation where the whole base just kind of has this really cool explosion and then all sorts of fireworks play after that. And those fireworks basically just continue on forever until you restart the game. So I um, just had a ton of fun with this one. So now that we kind of have all the core pieces in place, now it's time to basically just finish this up. So after this, I want to go ahead and add in a little bit of unit variety. So I'm just going to, again, continue using the Sinti Sci-Fi Worlds pack to create different vehicles. So I have like a hovering vehicle that again uses the agent's navigation package to do its pathfinding and everything like that to the opposing base. And of course it's going to battle entities in the same kind of way. The next asset I used was the Flockbox asset. This is another dots powered asset 
set. And I was basically able to use this to kind of create these little drones that kind of, you know, flock around and they can kind of, you know, move around and they end up running into different enemy units and kind of dealing damage to them that way. So this was kind of another fun asset to use. And then just to add a little bit more character unit variety, I added in some monsters from the Infinity PBR Low Poly Monster Pack number two. This pack includes a total of 19 badass low poly assets that you can use in any game. Then to finish out the visual polish of the game, I of course continued to use the Sinti Sci-Fi Worlds pack to add in a bunch more props and environment assets. Even added in another asset from friend of the channel Tobias, which is this fake interiors asset. This is a really interesting one because it basically gives us these kind of, you know, city buildings type look. And we actually get this little bit of parallax effect in the actual buildings themselves to make it look like those are actually real interiors inside the buildings. However, this is actually all done through a shader and it's actually just completely math based about how that kind of parallax effect works. But I think it looks really cool and it adds a nice, colorful and fun, interesting background to this Turbo Wars game. So anyways, here's the final result of Turbo Wars. Again, it is based off of the StarCraft II custom game called Nexus Wars, which I was very much a fan of back in the day. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's a fun little game. Of course, if you want to check it out, you can go ahead and check it out in the links in the description below. I will warn you that I don't have any enemy AI or anything like that set up. So you actually are just going to be having to you know, control both sides of the uh, battle, but you know, that's okay for now. And once again, thank you to the Unity Asset Store for sponsoring today's video. Again, I've included links to all the assets that I featured in today's video down in the description below. So don't forget to check those out. And just a reminder, make sure you go ahead and check out the summer sale because many of these assets as well as many more are going to be a part of this summer sale uh, where you can get nice steep discounts on all these assets. So go ahead and check that out. And again, thank you to Unity for sponsoring today's video. Anyways, with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video and maybe it inspired you to make an art RTS game of your own. Really do hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, please let me know if you do have any questions or if there's any other videos that you want to see me do. Maybe there's some types of games that you want to see me create with Unity's ECS. Definitely love to hear that down in the comment section below. Anyways, hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.